Our learning today is dedicated for a Rafua Shlema for Chana Meira Batina Rachel. Uh, she just have her full shleim and everything should go well. And uh, we will learn a little bit uh, uh, together, continuing. We are in the midst of a very um, complex family situation, one that we have, hopefully most of us, have trouble relating to since it involves um, multiple um, wives and uh, children and the like. Uh, where we left off last was the birth of uh, Dan and Naftali, uh, both named by Rachel Imenu, Dan, because a Kodesh Baruch Hu judged her situation and by by rights or by uh, whatever you want to say, by uh, adjudication, Shem decided it was time. Naftulei Elohim Niftalti, Im Achoti Gam Yacholti. I, it's either struggled with my sister and prevailed. It's either I was, or we saw some of these uh, examples in the various Mepharshim last, last time, Again, uh, it could be some kind of a struggle. It could be um, some kind of a, an idea that my prayer was accepted by Hashem. And that's what is not the struggle with my sister, but the struggle that I had regarding um, the issue of my sister having children and my not having children. But the conflict's not with my sister. The conflict is the reality of the situation that I had to overcome. How did I get there? Through tefillah. Various approaches. We saw those inside. I don't want to uh, revisit that right now because we have to get to uh, Zilpa, uh, and that is uh, Pasuk Tet, verse uh, nine, chapter thirty, verse nine. Batera Lea ki amda miletet. Lea saw that she uh, had paused from giving birth. Vatikach et Zilpa shivchata vatiten ota li Yaakov li Isha. Now along comes uh, uh, Lea with her maidservant that has been given to. Uh, Yaakov Avinu, when she, Leah, was married to him. You may recall, we saw those psukim previously. Uh, Lavan is the one who gives Bilha, or Zilpa rather, with Leah, and Bilha with Rachel over to Yaakov Avinu. And if you notice here also, Zilpa, who is starting off as a shivcha, is given to Yaakov as a wife, as an isha. Vatela Zilpa, now why did Leah do this? I mean, for Rachel, it says she couldn't have children. She was very frustrated. She actually spoke uh, uh, some very harsh words to Yaakov and some harsh words about herself, meaning give me children. And then if I can't have children, then I'd rather die. It's a very, very harsh. Leah doesn't say that. Leah just sees what happens. She sees uh, that she's not having more children. Uh, and now Bilha has had two children. So Leah gets an idea. Oh, I'll just have my maidservant marry uh, uh, Yaakov as well. If Lavan gave ya Leah and um, Rachel to Yaakov, uh, Rachel and Leah gave Bilha and Zilpa to Yaakov. It's just interesting that it, it plays uh, that way. And Zilpa has... Um, has these uh, these uh, 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 two children now in succession? Right? Bagad is read as ba God. God has arrived. What is God? Rashi says Mazel Tov. A good. Uh, it's a, a good. A good tiding has come. Uh, a good. A good setup. Kamo God Gedi Usnukla. Um, and uh, uh, Aramaic uh, expression, and uh, something about uh, some notion of um, uh, of good good mazel that has come with him. The Medrash quoted by Rashi, Midrash Agada Shinolad Mahul. He was born the uh, the uh, with, with with a brit milah, meaning it was a sign of some kind of divine assent to the reality that he was born into the world because he was born uh, without a need for a brit milah. I see your hand. Give me one minute just to at least finish the opening gambit over here. Rashi himself says, I don't know why in the Torah it doesn't say Ba God. God, meaning Mazel Tov, has arrived, but rather Bagad. Because the word Bagad, three letters, Bet Gimel Dalit, actually means something else. Bagad, uh, it means um, treachery. And um, something that's betrayed. But Vatikrashmo God, because she said Ba God, clearly she meant to say Ba God, 
God has arrived. And Rashi himself says, I don't actually know what the what the rationale is. Then there's in a parenthesis because it's not in the original printing of Rashi, the Futs Rishon as it's known, but it appears in later printings, which always keys us into what we're going to read next. Maybe it was spoken by Rashi and just didn't make it into the first printing, or maybe it was an interpolation from a later student. Remember, I've talked about this many times. In your svarim, in my svarim, you're reading, you're inspired, you hear a shear while you're sitting with a safer, you have a pencil, and you write on the side a little note. That's obvious that you've written in a note when your handwriting in pencil doesn't look like the printed typeface that's on the sheet. But when everything's handwritten, and there's only one color ink and it's black, you know, it's the Ford Model T Lahavdol of, of uh, writing, and uh, the script is exactly yours, and uh, you have a manuscript and you're writing on the margin, and you wrote the manuscript originally, comes the next generation and sees the marginalia and the body of the text, and they slide it in, but it's not clear what's the mar what is the note. Is the note what was heard in the shear? Is the note with the Talmud? Says, ah, it reminded me of some cross-reference elsewhere. Regardless, I mean, it's important to know, but Davar Acher, because we're not sure, did Rashi create a Davar Acher over here? Davar Acher, Lama Nikreit Teva Achat. Why is it one word? Bagad. Kemo, Bagad Atabi, Kshabata El Shivchati. Ishe Bagad Be'eshet Nurim. You have created treachery against me by marrying my Shivcha, my, uh, my maidservant. Like a man who would be treacherous, showing a lack of fidelity towards the wife of his youth. So, just to explain what this means, um, it's it would be this is a good example, just from a methodological perspective. It'd be a little bit strange. Why would Rashi write? I don't know why the Torah says one word bagad, and then right after that, write davar acher lamani kreitivachat. Why is it written as one word? Why not remember Rashi? One of his, one of the one of the many elements of his brilliance is the trenchancy of his commentary. He's not mincing words or wasting words. Or in the old days, you say it's because they don't have a lot of ink, so they have to minimize. That might have been part of the issue: paper, uh, 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 quills, and the like. But part of it is also that when something is well thought out, you can say it in a more concatenated manner. Davar acher, lamani kreitevachat bagad. Why is it bagad? Because there's something going on here beneath the surface where Leia is reflecting the idea that you have committed some kind of treachery against me by being with my maidservant. Now, Shelly, give me one more minute, indulge me here, just to understand what this might mean. If Rachel Imenu in her life desires children more than anything, Leia as we see from how she named Ruvain and Shimon and Levi, desires the love of the husband who chose her second. I mean, chronologically first, but not because it was really his choice. So the woman who is seeking the affection of her husband desperately, now, paradoxically, when she sees that her sister, who is to this moment childless, and now has found a patent, a way to um, uh, be able to have children. By the by, Leah already understands that perhaps the arrival of children helps to cement the marital bond because you now have a, something you've produced together. Leah, however, seeing that Rachel has taken Bilha and ele elevated her to the level of being an Isha and a childbearing one at that, Dan Naftali, Leah, who sees that she's not having children, she already is blessed with four children, remember? Ruven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda. Now decides, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing that my sister did. I'm going to match what she did. But even in having that child, she names the child, Rashi, first rendering, Ba-God, which is how we read it. By the way, we don't read Ba-God. We read the Baal Kore has to read Ba-God. as two separate words. That's the Cree. But the Ketiv is Ba-God. So on the Cree, that means Likro, to read, that's uh, Mazel Tov. Ba God, the God has arrived. God means uh, a, a good, a good omen, a good sign. Um, but and we don't know why it says Bagad in the Torah. Answer one. Answer two. Davar Acher, which again maybe Rashi, maybe someone else. Is there's another layer here of mm, 
you you've you you Zilpa have committed treachery. I created the treachery, Leah's thinking, but it's still treachery because why this person Zilpa is taking me away from my husband. Well, just something to think about, and you know, we have to ask. So then, Leah, why did you do it? Was your desire to be even with your sister so great that you were willing to sabotage the the loving relationship you have with your husband? Did you feel as Leah as Rachel felt Billa is an extension of me? when I have no choice, so now Zilpa is going to be that extension? If, according to that second rendering, no. Second rendering, the Davar Acher. And again, I urge you to consider, we're not 100% sure this is really a Davar Acher. I've pointed out, we've learned already a few years together with this, Davar Acher in Rashi is should raise the flag right away, um, that there's something about the first interpretation that has some weakness in its interpretation that the second one compensates for, and there's some weakness in the second one that the original interpretation compensates for. I always use the same mode of, you know, they're each holding each other up. They're supporting each other, which is on top, which is on the bottom. It's not. They're like lying side by side to hold each other up to, to support the um, interpretation of the, uh, of the, of the psukim. Okay. That was all intro and give you something to think about Shelly. And I think uh, maybe someone else had their hand up. But I don't remember who it is now. Shelly, go ahead, please. Good morning. I can't help. Th- good morning. I can't help but think, where on um, where is Yaakov in all of this? We, yes. We're getting some idea of what both Leah and Rachel uh, yes. uh, think, but Yaakov doesn't have to take this woman, right? I mean, you know, just because just because you know I'm not having any more kids, uh, yeah. take the take. Why doesn't he say something to Leah like he said to Rachel? Like, my God, I've got kids with you. What are we doing here? Right. We're just causing, we might just be causing some problems. Right. So he doesn't. There must right. be some commentator that has some kind of medrash that, why is he being so passive? Well, you know, what's going on here? Uh, yes, yes. Um, it is a great question. Like, he's just going along with it. It's almost like of a kind with Yaakov Avinu not saying to Lavan the morning after the first wedding, that's not what I asked for, not what I bargained for, not who I chose. The Kiddushin was a ta'ut, and uh, I'm mafkia the Kiddushin. It never took, it was never toface. That's a lot of terminology for this whole thing's one big mistake, and I don't accept, and I'm not staying married to her. I don't care what you do. But none of that yes. happened. He passively went along with like, okay, okay. That's, right? more, that's more understandable, because he may have understood what happened to Leah. What would happen to Leah if he renounced this marriage and he was too kind-hearted to do it? But he certainly does not have to take Zilpa on. And Agreed. he's short-tempered Agreed. with Rafael and he's just that passive with Leah? Agreed. And that's I, I appreciate everything you're saying. This is what the Ramban is asking. I'll read you the first words of the Ramban because he's just posing the question exactly like saying, Vatera Leah ki amdami leret, loya dati ma ma leya. I don't know what this action is with regard to Leah. She wasn't barren. Why did she give her maidservant over to become a new wife? And it's not the way of women, generally, apparently in a polygamous society, to continue to add more wives to be their competitors. Rather, we will have to say, we will have to say, when the Ramban uses that language, he's basically saying, maybe the question is a little bit better than the answer, because it speaks to motive, and the Torah doesn't tell us the motive. And we don't have Midrashim giving us enough background to be able to answer it straight away. So we'll have to say the following. This is the Ramban's approach. It must be, as the Medrash describes, the Imahot are all Neviot, they know that the, the, the magic number is 12. There are going to be 12 tribes. Now, how do they know? The answer is already found in the statement I made before. Don't ask that question because it's the given and the problem. They're Neviot. They know the number is 12. That's what they know. And Leah wanted to make sure that most of the children will be from her or from her family. And that would be within her purview, her under her supervision, and that her sister would not have more children than she. Sounds like jealousy. Amra 
Natan Elokim Schari Asher Natati Shivchati Ishi. That's when Yisachar is born, she's going to say that. God has given me my recompense that on account of the fact that I gave my maidservant over to my husband. And uh, Yaakov goes along with it. He goes along with it because he knows that he's going to have a lot of children and he knows that this, this is how it's meant to be. Now, it didn't answer for me. So why with Leah? Why with Zilpah? Why not? Like, why? Why are they figuring out what the balance should be? Vitachen. So the Ramban goes on. Isn't it's possible? It's possible. And Vitachen in the note in Torah Chaim edition of of the Chumash that I really like because it'll tell you the manuscript issue of this that. So he says Vitachen, meaning maybe they weren't really prophets, prophetesses, and they didn't really know. Knowing, however, that their husband, Yaakov, had received a promise from Hashem that to his progeny be given the, the land. The Avram and Yitzchak lo hir bubanim. Yaakov, uh, excuse me, Avram and Yitzchak did not have many children. Remember that Avraham only has two children, and then he has another slew of children, but those other children, including that first child, are off. They're, they're not part of the covenant. Kibi Yitzchak, Karla Chazar, the Torah says so. Yaakov, Esav, Yaakov chosen, Esav going off to Har Seir. They know that it's Yaakov's children who are going to, they think. It's not because they're prophets. They don't know that the number is 12. They just know it's going to be, the children will get it. But they know that obviously they don't have many children who are part of the covenant. Therefore, um, Yaakov actually did want to have many wives so that he could have many children to be able to inherit the land. Because in Parshat, uh, Lech Lecha, when Hashem spoke to Avram Avinu, he told him the fourth generation will return here, and now they're living where? In Galut, in Aram Naharayim, in Lavan's place. They're in exile. Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, that's three generations. Vidor Revi'i, that's the children of Yaakov. Yashu Vuhena, they'll come home. They think it means them. And therefore, before Yaakov would decide to take a foreign wife, Leah decides, not because of a prophecy about the number 12, but just because she knows, like everybody knows, there have to be enough um, uh, children and he's going to want to have more wives. Better to get someone in-house than to uh, farm it out to somebody from outside. Is the question better than the answer? I'll leave that for your consideration. I have my own ideas about it. But the Ramban is similarly struggling with why exactly did Leah do this? And the Torah itself does Torah Shabbatav and Torah Shabbat really doesn't give us a straight answer. And part of the mystery is bound up with the fact that the kid's name is God because of Bagad. And Bagad is not written Ba God, but Bagad, which implies some kind of treachery as such. Um, and if we stop there, okay, that would be lovely. But we don't stop there because Zilpa has a second child. And um, that means another year has gone by. Again, she gives the name. She's the, the original matron who set this up. So she gets the naming rights, right? And um, uh, now I, I'm fortunate, glad, happy, right? I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. Everyone will be, um, all the daughters, means all the women and all the wives will praise me because I have so many children. How many children does Leah have? Well, it depends who you ask. Biologically, she has four, but in actuality, in terms of the naming and the raising, she has six children already. Well, we're halfway, we're halfway to 12. All right, there. If, again, according to the idea that there are Nevi Oltni, the number's 12. Oh, I have six now. Great. Even, I have six, and she right now has two from Bilha. She'll have another four through Billa. It'll be six and six. It'll be even. That's sort of the, 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 the thought. Um, or, or maybe there's something else at play, which we'll come to as the next story. The first more questions in the comments. Shelly, and I feel like someone else. Helen, right too. Oh, and Helen's there, too. Helen. Helen, let's give you a chance first, because Shelly had a chance already. Yeah. Helen, okay. say a few words, okay. then hear from Shelly. Go ahead, please. Okay. Why does Ashes Manoah get in the Ruach? And it's clearly written that Ashes Manoah 
Manoah gets a nevuah. Yes. And why these ladies are exactly getting, we're wrestling with the idea of nevuah. And then the second thing is, my friend's daughter is Shifra. I know a lot of Shifras, but I don't know a lot of Bilhas and Zilpas. Right. And why is their name not more honorary? I I and know are, I know of Zilpa I know of Bilha I don't know any Zilpas you're right I don't know any Zilpas but I do know Bilhas um, phonetically one caught on more than the other I'm not sure uh, I'm sure there were Zilpas in Europe there may be Zilpas today if anyone knows a Zilpa let me know I'd love to know but they're, 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 yeah why not yeah there are Bilhas for sure and one uh, one, one other thing please where is where is the Boule Vu from the Imahos or the Avos to Bilha and do Zilpa, it sounds like they're chattering and there's no voulez vu. Hard to know the answer to that question. I wish I could answer you directly. I'm not sure because the word shifcha does imply they're maid servants, but Isha implies actually they're made into wives. Was it willing or unwilling? I don't, I can't answer that directly. I just don't have enough information. And that's also a little bit of the answer about what you just pointed out accurately about the Navua of Eshet Manoach. Eshet Manoach clearly has in, in, in Sefer Shoftim a, a revelation with an angel and a whole thing. Um, there's a big question there about why that happens. The question is more there maybe than on the Imahot. I mean, you could answer about the Imahot versus the Avot that they have different, they had different um, uh, covenantal roles and that the covenantal role uh, of each is written in the Torah Shibichtav, but it's only part of what's actually going on. So, for instance, Chazal will say, Sarah Imenu has more uh, prophecy than Avram Avinu does. Really? How come it doesn't say much in the Torah? Well, the angels come visit her. Yeah, but uh, look at what happens with um, Avram Avinu. Several times Shem speaks to him. So there is a question. There is a question there for sure, uh, but maybe a little bit beyond the scope of what we have time for today. In terms of uh, parsing all of it, but it's more of a story about Eshet Manoach versus Manoach that she's on a higher spiritual level than him by a long shot, and he's uh, he's not so, on such a high level. And the whole story with Shimshon, anyway, um, uh, Eshet Manoach, Chana. There's different different uh, parallels that can be drawn there. Anyway, Shelley, go ahead, please. Okay, um, Esav gets married at the age of forty, much earlier than um, than Yaakov does. He has two wives and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Around the time Yaakov leaves, takes mm -hmm. a third one. We know that he has twelve children. Does that have anything to do with this? As a sort of somewhat yeah. of a contest, because yeah. the more okay, so they're trying to make sure that they and they would know from caravan lines and stuff like that that you 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 know what's going on and and it took place yeah. before. So yeah. okay, on, so it has on the to level of shot. It's Yishmael has twelve. Yaakov's going to have twelve. You mean you mean Esav? You don't mean Ishmael? No, no. I, I mean I mean um, I mean I mean Ishmael. Esav. I don't think Esav has twelve children yet, does yes. he? Yes. Yes. I think. Oh, so. he does. Yes. Oh, I, I I missed that. I'm sorry. I thought he's only no. going to have the children. It's only going to be listed in chapter thirty-five. Wait a minute. I, I thought way at the end when they talk about how he dies and where the where there the, those children are that there were twelve there. Oh, that's ch chapter thirty-five. Um, it, it is. Uh, yeah, it's, 30, it's thirty-six. 12, I mean, thirty-six. 30, I'm sorry, thirty-six. 30, 36. thirty-six. Way at the very end, so. At the end of thirty-six. Yeah, yeah. It's it's got. Let's see. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a whole genealogy. So yes, I'm just yes. There is a whole genealogy. I don't. I didn't remember that it was exactly twelve. There was that symmetry, huh? I didn't remember that it was twelve. Is it twelve? I didn't count. I'd have to count it because it doesn't. Does it doesn't say specifically? No, say but it, but, but, for, but for but for for um at the end of I don't have in this volume at the end of Chai Sara, it does say with regard to Ishmael, it actually speaks about the fact that there's twelve princes. Okay, but, so the, but, 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 there, but it is it is about this contest of how many children each one's going to have because the more children you have, the more your line continues, the more your name continues, uh, right? So is Yaakov afraid that somehow 
because uh, Esau has had these many children, has these many wives, keeps on having them, that he will be able to settle the land instead of him? Is he afraid that somehow he uh, isn't going to get the prophecy? Uh, he isn't going to get I, the heritage? I, I I don't know that that's, a, that's the concern, but there is certainly a concern about how many people there will be from these other nations and within his own nation to settle the land. I don't see this as a reaction, something that Asaph's doing at this point. Recall that the kings who emanate from Asa, the children of Asa, they already live in Seir, chapter 36, which we're kind of skipping ahead to try to get to. Uh, I don't want to go too far down that, that road. But if you look there, it actually describes that they're, they're not living in Eretz Canaan anymore, really. They've already picked up and they've moved. And... Um, you know they 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 go to live in uh, in in, in Seir. So whatever they had, they got up and took it elsewhere. And um, Yishmael also lives off the reservation. He's also uh, not in the area. But the idea of the symmetry of the twelve and twelve. I don't know that there were it was a competition uh, about covenants. It seems to be that it was just like we know we're going to inherit the land. So whether they knew prophetically it was twelve or not, they knew they're going to have to be the more children then the more there would be um, descendants and people who hopefully would have some loyalty. Look, that's what kings were always doing, right? That's why David Amal has 18 uh, wives. That's uh, because you have a big, big royal family and you have more representatives who are purportedly going to be loyal, purportedly. That didn't always play out as it should. Anyway, um, so uh, Zilpa, two children, um, the second child is uh, Asher. So God and Asher are just very interesting that Ruvain and Shimon were about suffering, plight, petition, supplication, lacking, wanting, seeking, right? God, Asher, Mazel Tov, joy, happiness, what other people will say in a very positive way, right? Remember that even Levi and Yehuda. Levi is now my husband will be with me because I still don't have that really. And Yehuda, or I don't have it in the way I would like it. Yehuda, now I'll thank Hashem because now I, I ended up with four kids. And again, according to the Medrash that they have Navua, someone has four children and they, there's some idea that there's going to be four wives. Again, you understand on the Midrashic level that works, but in the level of Pshat, that's totally anachronistic. How come? Because Rachel hasn't even thought yet about bringing Bilha into the picture. So what is Leah so excited? She had a fourth child out of the 12. And she that's only a simcha if there's only going to be, if there's going to be four wives, but it's only going to be two wives and it's her and, and Rachel. So she has four children. Maybe Leah, maybe Rachel is going to have eight children if they know the number is 12. But how do they know there's going to be four wives? It's actually Bilha only gets elevated as a contingency because Rachel says to uh, Yaakov in a moment of desperation, give me children or give me death. And Yaakov's saying, well, what, what would you like me to do? I'm not God. What does Rachel say? I have an idea. Bilha, step forward. And that is how we get to three wives. And then from there, we're up to four wives. But the fourth, the fourth child of, um, of Leah is the beginning of the dawn of some, what's the word? Equanimity. Some sense of, ah, now I can thank Hashem. This is a big thing. Right, I'm 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 very I'm very happy that I I was zocher to have this uh, this hapam odet Hashem. Now I'll thank Hashem. Why do you thank Hashem for the former four, four three? Because this this is very special, yeah, very special. And just on the level of pshat to understand when you get to God and uh, and Asher, the next two children, it's all about joy. Yeah. Uh, by the by, the joy is not related necessarily to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That joy and thanksgiving was Yehuda. God is a Mazel Tov. I mean, it's, it's all from Hashem, but you know, my, my relationship here is um, it's something good. He's, it's a good sign because he was he was born Mahul, according to this Madras. He was born Mahul means he had a Brit Milah already. And the um, the the Asher one is uh, joy also. Ki shruni, ki shruni banot. Uh, the, 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 even the, 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 the women are happy for me. Right, Rajbam writes, "Ani omedet bi isur uveshavach shema asur do tibanot." They, 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 they're very happy for me. They're glad um, uh, uh, for me, which is why the idea that bagad means like livgod, like treachery, is a little harder to understand how that really fits into this picture. Possible, 
but there's a picture perhaps in the names and that they bespeak something about the moment in which they find themselves uh, 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 here. The, the, um, the, um, the Rashbam uh, points out um, that um, he thinks, like Rashi does in the initial interpretation, Ba God means Ba Eleno Mazaltov. Um, it means some some kind of uh, good 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 tiding, good good happening, something uh, something like that. And he says anyone who wants to interpret the word God like the word Gedud, which is what Ibn Ezra and Radak would both be doing. What is a Gedud? A brigade. When she had God, she said, "By God, the brigade has arrived." Yeah, um, the, Ibn Ezra, by the way, was not so into the idea of Mazaltov. Uh, uh, that, that God means Mazel Tov, uh, uh, he, he thinks it really is a gedud, a brigade, a brigade for heaven, gedude shamayim. The Rashbam didn't accept that idea. He thought it's not going to be a gedud. He thinks it's like his Zaidi said, like Saba, Rashi said, it's going to be uh, Mazal Tov. V'gad enu yachol yot lashon gedud, b'lok felut al shnei dalatav. It has to be repeated. Gadad, yagodu. Uh, but it's not. It's not going to be. Um, in this case, excuse me. On God, it's it. It means it means ba God means the good the good the good time. The Mazal Tov has arrived. Um, and Radak also he thinks it's something along the lines of a gedud, like a, a brigade or some such uh, some such um, uh, uh, thing. Um, uh, oh no, wait! I made a mistake. I'm sorry, Radak. No, I made a mistake. I just made a mistake. Radak holds also Mazel Tov. I'm sorry, unless there was a second thing. Oh yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it just my eye caught. Radak has both ideas, and he quotes that Rabbi Moshe, uh, whoever that is, Rabbi Moshe Hakohen. It's probably Rabbi Moshe Hakohen Ibn uh, Jikatila. Uh, he was the one who held that it was um, a gedud. Okay, so could be, could be, and. Uh, Gedud Shamayim, according to Ibn Ezra, Gedud Banim, according to uh, Radak, and according to Rabbi Moshe, Ibn Jikatila, Rashbam doesn't like it. Rashi doesn't admit that possibility, and uh, and so so it um, so it goes. Okay, someone else had their hand up. I don't know who it is. Rabbi, Hi, Helen. Rabbi, Go ahead. Being a it's okay. okay. Uh, Rabbi, 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 hello. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. Hayapoch Namer Gedud Dov. So are Gedudov spots or duplications? And number two is, to bring it to modern times, the prince made a book, Spare, that he felt he'll never be the monarch. And unfortunately, all of the 12 children never feel and never write the feeling that they are spare. Each one is hobby. And so I thought I'd like to bring that out. Okay. Um, yeah, interesting. I don't know the answer about that, uh, the notion of the leopard and its spots. I'm not sure what to make of it. I don't, I, my, my, um, I don't know. I don't know the answer. And, okay. and the second question, second point, yeah, I, I suppose, uh, I mean, clearly you get to the problem with Yosef, but maybe. And there's also an issue with Ruvain and Bilha that will come up as well. We'll come to that uh, shortly. Okay. It, yeah, verse four, verse fourteen. That's good. Verse fourteen. Um, Ruvain inserts himself. Vayelech Ruvain we make it sirchitim vayinsa du daim basade vayave otam elleya imo. It was Mother's Day. He brought her some flowers. What what is he doing? What is the du daim? What is he bringing? What is this for? Is it a fertility drug? Is it is it a nice thing to bring to your mother? What what's what is this about? Vatomer Rachel Elea Nina Li Midudae Bnech. Please give me from the, I think the English translation of Dudaim is mandrakes, which gets me personally not one iota closer to knowing what they are, but uh, that's my failure to know my botany uh, and the flora of the world. Um, but that's some kind of flower, some kind of plant. Uh, and Rachel asks Leah, can you please give me from the mandrakes, from the dudaim of your son? What are these dudaim? Why is Ruvain in this story giving them? Why is Rachel asking for them? Does she have no access to the field? She can't go find them? Does she, he know the magic store to get them in? I'm being facetious, but why, why couldn't she get them on her own? And why couldn't she ask Ruvain? And why couldn't she send Yaakov to go get them 
from Ruvain or Leah. But she goes to her sister and asks, please, Tana na li mi duda Can you please give me the dudaim? And we know how the story goes. One of the more challenging psukim for me to understand in, in uh, Sefer Breshit, uh, other than the things that I totally don't understand that are mystical about Masa Breshit and the Teva and the Mabul. But just leaving that aside, uh, and all the other psukim, uh, just on the level of human interaction, Leah's reaction is basically, you've taken away my husband, and now you want the flowers of my son? So Rachel responds with, okay, I'll let Yaakov be with you tonight if you just give me those flowers. And who gets the memo after everybody else? Talk about, as we said before, seemingly very passive and just letting things happen. Reminds us, he goes to work every day. He's not sitting at home. He's working in the field. She comes out to see him. I paid for you? I paid a fee? With the dudaim of my son? So, my turn? And we're wondering, like, I mean, is this the sniping back and forth between two sisters who are in a spat? The sibling rivalry? I remind you, they're grown women, they're mothers. So it could happen. They're getting into some kind of a squabble. And it's over the the, the mandrakes, the, the dudaim, and Rachel's willing to trade them away so that, well, excuse me, Leah's willing to trade them away. She wants something. Rachel wants something. And then we're waiting, like, where's Hashem in this story? Oh, Hashem seems to hear Leah's plight. Vatomer Leah, unlike children's children uh, of God and Asher, where Shem's name is not mentioned, Vatomer Leah Natan Elokim Sechari Asher Natati Shivchati Leishi Vati Krashemo Yisachar. We pronounce it the first time Yisachar, and then Yisachar with a silent a sin in it. Um, Ruvain, it's about Hashem. Shimon, about Hashem. Levi, apam yelavet ishi elabi, about my husband. Uh, Yehuda, about Hashem. Apam odet Hashem. God, Asher, about Mazel, and about how the other people react. Ishruni, benot, uh, etc. And now we're up to Yisachar, and Yisachar, oh, that's about, right, that's, that's about Hashem again. Dan and Naftali, just go back and look at Don and Naftali's names for one minute. I'm sure there are questions in the comments. There's a lot to say about this, which mostly we won't be able to parse today now that I see the clock. But look what happened in Pasuk Vav when Rachel named Dan and then when Rachel named Naftali. What shame Hashem appears there, which we have not heard regarding Leah? You see it? You, you notice the difference? For Rachel, unlike for Leah, where Leah named Ki Ra'a Hashem Be'onyi, Yud Kei Vavke, Ki Shema Hashem, Yud Kei Vavke, Hapam Odet, Vavke. And what do you have here? Shem Elokim. Elokim. Shem Elokim, Midat Hadin. Shem Elokim, um, the, the, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, uh, 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 running the world uh, through uh, Derech, um, Derech uh, Din. Danani uh, Elokim, Naftule Elokim. Then God and Asher, Shem not mentioned. Like with Levi, Shem wasn't mentioned. Right? Then came uh, then came uh, uh, Yisachar, Natan Elokim, Vaishma Elokim, Eleya, Batar, Atelet Bain, which is, by the way, when you look at um, 
at uh, just to flip around a little bit, verse one, chapter 30, verse one, it says that Rachel was jealous of her sister. And what does Yaakov say to Rachel? Hatachat Elohim Anochi. Yeah. Shame Elohim, shame Havaya. What's going on? And now Leah, when she has Yisachar, Natan Elohim, Shari, Bederach Din. Yeah. Last child to be born for Leah, it's just to complete the picture and sharpen the question, which I guess I have to come to next week at this point because we're out of time. Vatar od Leah vatele ben shishi liakov, vatomer Leah zivadani elokim oti zeved tov hapam is bleni ishi yeladeti lo shishabanim vatikran shemo zivulun. Notice that you have here both elements zivadani elokim, right? I received this. Uh, Shem gave me. Um, uh, 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 a portion is a zeved, a portion that is a good portion is a zeved. Um, and um, now um, my husband will uh, find a place in me. He's Belaini Ishi. A zvul is a location, a receptacle of some sort, usually for the purpose of building something. Rajban points out, Kimo Bano Baniti, Beit Zvulach. Like David uh, Shlomo Melch says when he inaugurates the Beit Hamikdash, he says, "I have built for you, Hashem, a Beit Zvul, as a place, uh, a place of dwelling, a uh, receptacle, but for the purpose of dwelling." Yeah. So Elohim has given me a good portion, and now my husband will realize that we're building. We've built the house together because I've had six children, and so I, she called him uh, uh, Zvulun. By the way, she had six children again. If the Navua is 12 children. Now she has six. I'm definitely one of the Imahot and no one can take it away from me because I have six kids. Four biological kids. No, no, not even. Six biological kids and two from the maidservant. She's actually got the majority. Majority rule. Most important wife. Has most of the kids. Eight. And what's Le Rachel going to have? So far, at the count that we're up to, two kids. Uh, um, Don and Naftali. That's it. So in total, there's 10. Very nice, symmetrical, beautiful number. 10. Uh-huh. And then the other two children are going to arrive. Of course, Yosef bin Yamin. I'll have to leave that for next time. And of course, I have more to say. Why the Shem is Shem, Shem Elohim? Um, what's going on between the Imahot um, and what's going on with Yaakov? So passive. And literally, it looks like Rachel was willing to sell her relationship with Yaakov somehow for these dudaim. Is that a chait on her part? Is that her not being so much on a nace? Were these fertility agents? Were they, what were they? What is this about? And what is the sig signaling that's going on that the Torah is trying to give us? Or that and everything else, we'll have to get back together next week because we are- totally Don't, don't forget Ruvain. 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 We'll come back to Ruvain also. Yeah, yeah, he's part. He's a crucial part of the story. We'll come back to him next week as well. Okay, looking forward to learning here with everyone on Thursday. For those who are coming to the Malachim uh, Olive Shear, have a great day.